There is nothing, nothing you can do to stop this now. Welcome back everyone, this will be my video for Stranger Things Season 4 Episode 8 and Episode 9. There were a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references and them setting up what's going on during Season 5, what's going on with Vecna, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll be doing episodes for Season 5 and I'll be doing a Season 5 video right after this too. Careful for spoilers from all of Season 4. If you haven't seen the episodes yet, we'll just start at the beginning and work our way through episode by episode talking about Easter eggs and WTF moments. Starting with episode 8, it was titled Papa, that's a reference to Brenner, who all the kids in the program call Papa, even Vecna calls Papa, still thinks of him as Papa. And it's all about Brenner's role in shaping everything that's happening with Vecna trying to absorb the main dimension, completely reshape everything to his whim, with him becoming the ruler of the main dimension, using the Mind Flayer. I'll explain that plot too, like he explains everything over the past couple seasons in what was going on with all the different villains and how it is he's able to use this hive mind to his advantage, controlling everything and how he's gonna do that to the main dimension soon. Really, it's gonna wind up being like the combined two dimensions. Like it'll be one giant dimension with everything kind of merging into one. All this stuff on the show is really happening because of what Brenner did to all of them, even though Vecna blames Eleven, like you're the one that helped me become who I am today. Really, Brenner is to blame for all this because he's the one that did all the experiments and pushed all the kids, abused them for all those years. But in present day, Brenner even tries to continue manipulating Eleven, forcing her to do what he wants, even though he's trying to save the main dimension, like he does care about her in his really messed up kind of way. He tries to save her from the military, but it's one of those situations where like he's killing everyone with his kindness. Like, I love you, but I'm doing really, really terrible things to you. And the show really wants you to believe that he dies during episode eight in the desert. And I do think that he's actually dead this time, even though they really want you to believe he was dead in earlier seasons. Like this time, it's gonna stick. I think this is mostly because this is season four, they're heading into the final season, like season five is gonna be it for the show. So they have to kill off a couple characters, a couple of the big characters to at least make it feel like there's some stakes on the show. There are really only a couple of the bigger characters that die. Eddie, I think is probably the biggest character just because of the way they set him up, but Brenner being the other big one. So RIP to the two of them. The episode starts with Vecna showing Nancy a vision of the future, telling her all his plans, everything about what's going on with the four separate kills, the four separate micro gates, opening the master gate, everything that comes to pass at the end of episode nine. Like here's a preview of everything that's happening in the finale. So if it wasn't clear, the central focal point for his new super gate, like the master gate, whatever you wanna call it, is in the center of town because he said, it's all gonna start in Hawkins. I'm gonna burn that to the ground and then it's gonna happen to the rest of the world, the rest of the main dimension, and I'm gonna reshape everything to my whim. They confirm that Max is meant to be like the last kill that he needs to open the last little minor gate so that the master gate can open. The way they explain the twist with her during the finale is that she died for like a minute but then she came back, like Eleven brought her consciousness back. So she's just in a coma right now. But because during that episode when they were fighting each other, she did die for a minute, that was enough to weaken that final minor gate to open the master gate. So that's why the master gate was able to open. Of all the stuff that happens during these final two episodes, and they are like super long episodes, particularly the finale, the only part that's really important is the stuff that's happening in Hawkins and the stuff that's happening with Eleven's group in California. All the stuff with Hopper and Russia isn't really critical for the plot, like that's all kind of extra stuff. None of what they're doing has any real huge effect on what's going on with their fight with Vecna or anything like that. But everyone comes back to Hawkins in the finale, so like everyone will be critical to the plot in the final season. They do use some of the Russia scenes to set up some of the big twists that you learn about from Vecna in the finale, like the whole thing with the black sentient swirly cloud that is essentially the Mind Flayer. They show you a version of that in Russia that they were experimenting on in containment, but it's in the finale that Vecna explains what the Mind Flayer was and how he's using it as sort of another finger puppet to create his hive mind situation and control all the other things inside the Upside Down. And eventually his plan is to do the same thing in the main dimension. Don't worry, I'll explain that in a second too. Like he explains how the Mind Flayer is critical to his control, like the hive mind, in the way that he controls everything else later in the episode. But if it wasn't clear, they confirmed that there never was any actual Mind Flayer villain creature. Like it was a sentient black cloud that just lived inside the Upside Down, but along came Vecna and used his power to mind control it and then through it vicariously control everything else. So like, yes, it does exist, but it wasn't like really the villain during season two. It was Vecna this whole time during season one, season two, season three, controlling all these different villains, seemingly trying to get back into the main dimension. So like he's the one who sent the Demogorgon after them in season one, Vecna sent the Demo Dogs in season two, and all the other creatures in season three. All Vecna controlling them, 
all using those particles from the black sentient cloud that was kind of the mind flare. They kind of clarify how he uses the mind flare particles to control other things and reanimate their bodies. We also finally find out what was going on with Will's mystery painting. It's not quite as big of a twist as I was expecting. It's just a depiction of their group of friends, the D&D group with Eleven, fighting the Vecna, but done in the style of a classic Dungeons and Dragons art piece. Like they're all knights fighting a big red dragon, but the red dragon is just a metaphor for Vecna. Will also says that Eleven asked him specifically to draw this particular picture. He doesn't come out to Mike discreetly or anything like that, or even his brother. Like he kind of tells them subtly, so he kind of came out during the episode. But I think part of the idea is that he's meant to have feelings for Mike, and those just do not come to fruition. Like he understands that Mike is with Eleven, like, oh no, this is never going to happen. And when they steal the RV, Eddie uses a Michael Myers Halloween mask to disguise himself. The first Halloween movie came out in 1978, so they would have already seen a couple of the sequels already, because the episode takes place during 1986. In real life, that Michael Myers mask during the Halloween series was just a real-life William Shatner mask that John Carpenter turned into the Michael Myers mask. So technically, Michael Myers has been running around in all those movies with William Shatner's face this whole time. Moving into episode 9, episode 9 is titled The Piggyback. It's a reference to Eleven following Max into the mind space into her memory so that she can fight Vecna. She literally tells Max that she piggybacked to her from a pizza dough freezer. It's also meant to be a reference to Vecna piggybacking into the main dimension using Eleven's power. Like, he tried to get her to do all these different things in all these seasons to get himself back into the main dimension and help open a big enough gate to combine both dimensions so that he could just control everything using the Mind Flayer's power. Although what's really happening here, just to be clear, it's more about both dimensions, the upside down dimension, the main dimension, combining into a single one with everything ultimately just turning into a version of the upside down, which Vecna would be capable of controlling because of his hive mind connection to everything. Like he can also physically control it as well. So that's why he says he wants to reshape the world. But the reason why this part of the Upside Down looks just like Hawkins, especially during Season 1, is because of what happened with the Mother Gate when Eleven opened the big one during Season 1. It was like a small version of what you see happening in the finale. So when she opened the Mother Gate, that caused both dimensions to overlap at this particular point, so you just see like a little bit of Hawkins existing in the Upside Down. Like it looks like a copy of the real world because the dimensions are literally overlapping at this point. The idea in the finale is the Master Gate will open up far enough that the dimensions will fully overlap and like everything will combine into one. It seems like the only things though that don't combine into one are like the actual living humans. Like all the buildings, the grass, the tree, everything looks like the Upside Down or starts to look like the Upside Down in Hawkins, but all the people aren't gonna like turn into Demogorgons or anything like that. Like there'll still be people walking around. The whole reason why Eleven's group uses the pizza dough freezer to help try and save Max is just because they don't have time to make it back to Hawkins in time to save Max. Like, we need a shortcut. All right, we'll do this through the mind space. If you remember earlier during Episode 8, Brenner said that Eleven would have to learn to fly before she could defeat Vecna. I don't know if he actually meant that they'll literally make her fly on the show. Like, that would be pretty cool if she does that in real life. But when she's inside this mind space, kind of like Vecna, they can literally break the laws of physics. It works more like the Matrix, like Matrix rules. She can fly, teleport, do anything she can imagine herself doing. Because it's all happening in their minds. That's also why there's three different versions of Vecna's house, Creel House. There's the physical versions, the one in the regular dimension, like the real house. There's one in the upside down that's a copy of that. The red version is the one inside the mind space. During the Russia storyline, Murray makes an Empire Strikes Back Star Wars reference when he says, I don't know, Jim, I've got a bad feeling about this. Because the episode is taking place in 1986, they would have all seen Empire Strikes Back. That came out in 1981. Season 1 takes place in 1983 for reference. And because the actors are aging up so fast, they said that their plan between Season 4 and Season 5 was to have a much bigger time jump. So I think when Season 5 picks up, you just see way more of Hawkins being turned into the Upside Down. They have a bunch of jokes about pineapple on pizza. That's a war that's going to rage for the rest of time. The vast majority of the rest of the episode here, and it's a very long episode, is really just about Eleven finding Max, saving her, and then defeating Vecna. We get a little bit more information from Max's storyline, like she talks a little bit about what's been happening with her, but it was all information that I think that most everybody understood already. Like everybody kind of understood what her trauma was. There had already been a lot of clues for that. She says that she felt guilty for wanting Billy to die, wanting to get away from him, even though she was experiencing all this abuse and she wanted to get as far away from it as possible. And because of that, she felt like she deserved all the terrible things that were happening to her during season four. And Vecna was just able to take advantage of that and use her as one of his targets. 
Eddie winds up dedicating his cover song of Metallica's Master of Puppets to Chrissy so that they can distract the demo bats enough for the upside down Steve crew to kill Vecna's physical body. They also have a joke in the episode where they yell about how Eddie doesn't have any good music when they're trying to save Nancy. Eddie yells at them saying that all his heavy metal tapes are real music. Like, this is good music. This is all music. You notice like the last part of the episode before Eleven starts fighting Vecna full on, she winds up in a version of the snowball, which is basically like the season two finale. And while this is all going on, like while they're busy fighting Vecna, there's this whole side plot with the basketball team and Jason coming for them at Creel House. And even though Jason is killed by the Master Gate, like RIP, he's literally cut in half when the gate opens. That was actually a pretty cool kill. At the end of the episode, when the news is broadcasting about what the real world thinks is actually happening here, the police still blame all the Dez on the Hellfire Club and Eddie. They don't know anything that's happening with Vecna or with the Upside Down or what's going on with the Master Gate. They just think that it's some natural disaster. So like that's going to continue into season five. Like they'll be fugitives. They'll still be after some of those kids that are part of the Hellfire Club. But then we have our long Vecna villain monologue where he explains the rest of his backstory and everything that happened to him after he came to his senses in the Upside Down dimension. Like after Eleven had pushed him in there originally. He said he basically surveyed the area and then eventually found the Mind Flayer creature, the Black Particles, and learned that it had a psychic connection through those Black Particles to all the other living creatures in the Upside Down and just used it to vicariously control everything living in the Upside Down. So if it wasn't clear, before Vecna came along, the Demogorgons, all those creatures, even the Black Sentient Cloud that is the Mind Flayer were already living creatures inside the Upside Down. He came along, used his power to control the Mind Flayer, and vicariously then used it to control everything else. And when Eleven closed the Mother Gate during Season 2, his sidestep plan was then to open the Master Gate with the four weaker gates, which we see happen during the course of Season 4, killing those four people so that he can open the much larger gate. And when he tells Eleven that she was the person who did this to him, made all this possible, he's just saying that he, as number one Henry, would have never realized this level of power, his plan would have never come to fruition had she not pushed him into the upside down dimension. Remember, none of this would work if he didn't have the power of the Mind Flayer at his disposal. Like, he'd be able to control all the things with his power, but not in the same way. Like, the Mind Flayer black particles are key to him scaling his power up to this large, wide area of effect. But Max is still alive, she'll be back in season 5, the only big characters who really died were Brenner, Eddie, and Jason, if you consider Jason to be a big character. Vegna's body disappearing is also their way of saying that he's still alive and will return in season 5. Like, Will even says later in the episode, I can still feel his presence everywhere now. But like, the whole last 30 minutes of the episode is like a Lord of the Rings Return of the King style epilogue with like an ending after the ending. Where you see all the repercussions of the Master Gate opening and what happens to all the regular people, what the world is thinking about all this. Like I said, nobody really knows what's going on, they just think that this is this weird supernatural, natural disaster kind of problem that they're blaming on the Hellfire Club. The California group makes it back, Hopper's group makes it back from Russia, so like everybody is back in Hawkins for season 5. You also notice at the hospital, Lucas is reading Stephen King to Max while she's in the coma. The book is The Talisman. The plot of that story is meant to be similar in commentary on what's happening during Stranger Things. Like that story is a multiverse kind of story and a lot of things that happen during that are similar to things that happen during the Stranger Things season 4, season 5 story. Robin seems like she's going to wind up going out with Vicky during season 5 or maybe in season 5 after they defeat Vecna. Dustin winds up telling Eddie's uncle about what happened to him and sort of memorializing him like, no, no, he died a hero. They explain that Eleven and Hopper are moving back into their shack because she still needs to hide out. Like, it's the same shack from earlier in Season 2. There's even an Ego box that's still left over. Don't eat any of those. And the way that Will explains it is that they're treating what happened during their final battle in Season 4 as a loss. Like, Eleven thinks that she lost to Vecna. And I think the idea with Brenner saying that she needed to be more powerful, you need to learn to fly, is the whole idea like that she had this inner power to open the portals to other dimensions and she'll just get more powerful heading into season 5 and eventually be able to close the Master Gate. But like this moment after all the reunions where they all look up at the sky and it starts looking more like the Upside Down, it's just meant to be more of a season 5 teaser, like an end credits kind of tag scene where the Upside Down starts merging more fully with the main dimension. So the idea is that there's going to be a really big time jump when season 5 picks up, more of Hawkins will look just like the Upside Down, like it'll continue to look worse and worse and worse. But what'll happen is, is I'll do a dedicated season 5 video after this that should post pretty soon, so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. But if you have any big questions about plot points or anything that happened during the episodes that I didn't address during the video, just write those below in the comments and I'll try to answer them then.
While you wait for everything, click here for my brand new Marvel Ant-Man 3 Avengers footage breakdown and Easter eggs from Avengers Quantum Encounter, and click here for my full Boys Season 3 Episode 7 video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.